Hello there, it's Heide here. Uh, I know the video and the audio aren't in sync because uh, some, some for some reason I um, recorded the video and then after I played it back I realized there's no audio recorded to it. So I'm just going to speak over the video. Uh, so first excuse my lighting and the quality of the video, it's just moving houses at the moment and uh, moving the office as well. So um, yeah. Um, basically what it is, this is a boiler board that I have in one of my houses and uh, it's actually gone wrong. It's an Ariston boiler, a Genius HE circuit board, uh, taken out of the boiler. Uh, what happens is we have a um, the boiler with the uh, digital board. Um, isn't working so the mechanics are all fine the boiler is fine the gas is fine the whole thing is okay it's just the main circuit board which is that one that we're only looking at isn't working uh, there's no digital coming up uh, there's no lights there's nothing this is actually dead so uh, what we're doing right now is kind of diagnosing the fault. So uh, what we'll do, uh, just power the board up using the plus and minus over there, you can see. Uh, so you can see you've got 240, uh, 39 volts to 240 volts. And uh, we're just gonna need to check um, the fuses. So uh, what we'll do soon, we're gonna power, power off the, the mains and then start checking for uh, the fuses. So now we're making sure that the whole thing is actually down. So as you can see, um, we're waiting for it to come down for the charge. So that's good. And now we're going to put it to a diode mode, uh, just to test um, any shortages. So now you can see um, where it says zero, it means uh, the, um, is actually beeping means it's actually connected. So you can see the brown is connected to the top one. Uh, let's get rid of this one. Uh, and the blue is connected to the bottom one. Uh, so the blue to the bottom is nothing, and the blue to the... So the two fuses plus on, on, on the plus and minus. Uh, they both looks look okay. They're fine. They're, they're, they're not blown up. And what's going to happen is, uh, most likely, uh, the fuse will feed into uh, the little uh, black uh, conductor. So that usually is a conductor to do a slight regulation to stop damaging uh, the transformer, as you can see. So the regulator is cut slightly regulate the power, go push it onto the, the transformer. And then the transformer will uh, will have the other side um, taken uh, on one side 240 volts and then given on the other side uh, something smaller like uh, 20 or 30 uh, volts. And then you have the regulator uh, circuit, which is the one next to it on the left, right, where the uh, little capacitor is there. Um, so basically, usually the, um, the, uh, the right hand side doesn't go wrong uh, because all kind of mains and tied up connected um, and the smaller bits usually the ones go, go off. Also notice on the board some damage signs. Uh, usually uh, if you see any that means uh, either heating has been going on. So you can see here is a little little marks in there to indicate there's something not not quite right um, but um, it isn't obvious that or that obvious uh, so what we'll do we'll start checking uh, the voltage uh, the ones that are coming in into the transformer and then the, as uh, as it going out so what we'll do now we're doing a tracing on where the volt the mains coming in uh, so basically you can see here uh, the blue and the brown cables go in uh, and then they go into the two fuses. I can see I'm just testing it now. 
and then afterwards the fuse will uh, will feed into the uh, the little uh, conductor the the the, the black uh, device you saw earlier so you can see now here underneath um, well, I did actually take the light down to show you underneath the board. So with the with more powerful light, you'll you should see you should be able to see the connectors between the part and the board on the on the other flip side. So I don't need to flip it over. So now we confirm that uh, the signal is going all the way from uh, from the conductor into the other the other side <clears throat> so basically now you're going to trace it all the way down to see if it hits the um, the transformer so now between the two three four nine is okay and yeah so that the in, in ohms that's absolutely fine between the two pins uh the, the plus and minus and then we're going to have to go all the way to find out uh what's happening to the transformer side so now um we're going to start measuring or just basically testing that side to see does it go to the transformer all the way uh you can see some blue part blue uh parts which is basically another, another another coil in there to do more regulation and now you're going to trace so that's the coil there it looks like it's connected so that's all fine so that goes to the coil And then the coil is connected. Yeah, good. And then from the coil to the um, first uh, pin of the transformer. So that's good. And also, it looks like the other part is connected to the to the first pin or the second pin of the coil. So now we have the input going in here. So we know we, we know the mains going all the way to the transformer and then it has to come out on the other side, but it's going to come up with a lot less voltage and more more current. That's how transformers work. So they transform voltage to current, that sort of thing. So um we're going to switch the power on uh just to see what's happening on the on each on each side going to band to uh, to voltage uh well a ac voltage and then test that way just try not to touch the the pins there yeah so 240 234 good now let's check the other side and that's only five volts which doesn't make well it's okay it looks like something is coming out of it, but five with that sort of board doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, usually, from my experience, this should be a lot more and then regulated, even with small things like PCs or uh, little switches or network switches, they should come up at least about 16, I would say. So now this power is going to a set of diodes, as you can see on the top. Uh, to do regulation. So basically, uh, I'm just going to switch it off now. Just on the safe side. So yeah, it's going down. Good. Now, as you can see, uh, these set of diodes uh, act as regular as at a, a bridge, a full bridge rectifier. What that means is the signal uh, initially comes in as a full sine wave uh, up and down peaks, uh, and then the with the rectification uh, it actually halves it down so the half that goes under the line will go above the line so it becomes like little mountain peaks uh, as opposed to up and down sound wave um, that um, basically how a rectifier works so they take two in and two out uh, the, as a square and then we'll take the We'll just invert the the voltage to go in, and then the other part is um, it has to go usually through a capacitor to 
it's more than out. Uh, that's the capacitor there. Usually, it's close to the to the um, to the bridge uh, to smoothen out the voltage. And instead of having a really high peak or high mountain peak, they will actually take it down to a to a lower peak. Still, still have still uh, big, but it's not it's not as uh, as big as it used to be. But it's just basically what it is. Instead of going down to zero, it'll go down to slightly below, above zero and then carry on. Uh, so the mountains, uh, instead of going all the way down, they'll go slightly over the, over the the zero, and then uh, becomes more uh, more smoother. Or, or, or yeah, that's basically how a capacitor works, just to smoothen things out. Uh, but usually with capacitors, they they usually go wrong. Oh, look at this, uh, checking the capacitor pins um, or somewhere near the capacitor is actually uh, almost short uh, and that is a one ohm, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, so one ohm is, is actually, there, there's a short there somewhere and it looks like the capacitor, uh, the first pin is going to the first pin of the regulator and also the second pin is going to the second regulator. So that means is the capacitor is going to, uh, well, it's feeding all the way to the regulator and then the regulator going, pushing things out. Um, the IC, which is a three pin one, um, actually have seen it many times before, um, is a standard, pretty much standard regulator will be. So just gonna quickly have a look at it. And uh, from what I can see is seven, eight, 12, um, Yes, yeah, the L seven eight twelve CV type regulator, and uh, basically, from my experience, the first pin is the input, the middle one is the ground, and the last pin is the output. So you'd expect to have uh, the input and the output kind of going the same, but with regulated amps. So uh, what the, what what the job of this is to do is uh, is to take um, the power, uh, make it really smooth. So from a sine or peak uh, or mountain type sine waves or half sine waves into a full nicely clean DC output. Um, that's why you have the heatsink behind it because there's a lot of amps going to be consumed and and converted into heat. So. Um, with that in mind, uh, it looks like we pretty much need to take the capacitor off just to find out what's wrong with it. Because usually capacitors, when they run out of capacitance, uh, they cannot store the charge uh, anymore. And then the whole charge goes into the the regulator and sometimes it can burn it or kill it. Um, so what we need to do is test out the capacitor. Sometimes with capacitance, you can see the cap will go uh, concave or go up at some point. Um, uh, sometimes it doesn't, it, you can't rely on uh, visual all the time, but you need to really take that capacitor off uh, and test it. Uh, you can't just leave it in the circuit and test because it's not going to give you the, the accurate readings. So what we'll do, we'll take out the capacitor out of uh, off, off the circuit and then test it by itself and then see if that uh, resolved the short and then take it from there. So that's uh, the first part. What we'll do is kind of power up the equipment, um, waiting for the uh, the uh, solder iron and the uh, the suction as well. So just going to show you what's uh, what's happening at the moment. Yeah, again, it's the. Uh, I had no idea the system was not recording my audio, so I'm just recording it on a separate. Uh, device and now I'm going to merge it later on together. So anyway, this is, uh, that's what it looks like. So that's what we're heating up. Nearly there. So now this is the suction uh, tool that I have to remove the We 
we're just going to wiggle the pin and then empty the solder of it, just suck the solder in. Sometimes with, uh, with old soldering, um, it can uh, it can take a little bit more time, but uh, as you can see, the pins are actually coming out nicely. I usually do 350 uh, to desolder, which is fine. So you can see now, we're good. Just wiggling it, not too much. You don't want to break the um, the through holes on the board. So that's out now. Very good. And now we're going to give it a test. So I'll test the capacitor to find out um, what's happening to it. Usually that's a um, 50 volt, 1000 microfarad as you can see there and the on the on the tester it should say thousand or about around a thousand nine hundred and something is fine it's got the tolerance the percentage but not anything less than that so now we're testing the capacitor make sure the uh, the pins are all right so the minus goes to the minus otherwise it won't give it accurate reading No, that's not good. It's five microfarads. That means this capacitor, as as we suspected, it's not going to work. Uh, or this basically is storing a little charge and then firing it back into the regulator. So that pretty much means it might have killed the regulator itself, um, or might have to sell the short or not. We don't, we don't know. But um, we're gonna quickly now test the pins to see if the removing the capacitor did solve the problem hopefully it did but I kind of slightly doubt it so we're gonna put on diode test and you can see now it's still short so that means something is not right on the regulator so all you need to do is take out the regulator itself and then find out um, if the pin's still short. So now the suction tool. Just taking the pins out. CL7812 DC, oh sorry, CV. We'll test the pins to make sure, or to find out. Yeah, that's the output to the ground, and there's the input, and there we go. That's the problem. It looks like this is uh, the faulty device. So we should test now, and you shouldn't see any shorts. Um, yeah, that's the, the output is good. Uh, sorry, the input's good, and the output is zero, which is fine. So it looks like we got it. We got it fixed. Well, we got it. Uh, we, we found the source of the problem. So pretty much going to order these today, uh, maybe Amazon or eBay somewhere, just to uh, get the, the the same parts. And what we need to do now is to confirm that removing these. Um, are the fix for the problem. So rather than uh, keep removing more items and, and just plug things in, what we'll need to do is just clean up um, for any any of those pins to make sure that they're not shorting and then test and then uh, use the power supply, the bench power supply to feed um, the, 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 the voltage in. So after we remove this, before we do any testing, we need to find that after removing, what is the output from the um, the transformer? Because now with the short, 
uh, that was heating up and then giving you only five volts so I think when when we're gonna when we remove the uh, the parts we should have uh, a, a higher voltage coming out of it so it's gonna power it on again and then test to see how much voltage is coming out so we're gonna back to uh, AC volt measurement Uh, I can't see, just going to move it up a bit. 241, good. And then the output, let's see. It's 23 volt, that's more like it. That makes sense now with this transformer. Uh, so now, what we need to do is feed 23 volts onto the other side using a, a uh, regulated uh, input. Well, not really, just basically a bench power supply to make sure that we um, we test the other end to make sure that if we're going to plug in the uh, the transformer and the capacitor that it's not going to burn again because we have another part. So we'll safely test out the power supply. So just going to, as you can see on the top left of the screen, just going to increase the power to match uh, 23 volts. And also we're going to switch the mains off of the board so no more mains power going in we're just going to power up with the 23 volts uh onto the uh, the output and by the way the 23 volt you don't push it onto the pins of the regulator because that should be ac and we haven't got an ac one that should be the dc side which basically means after the uh, the diode section so that's going to be literally you push it where the uh, the pins of the of the of the capacitor is or usually the regulator is is is, is the best is the best uh, location so just going to plug the the time the switch the clock back in and to see if that works And now we're going to power up. And now if you're going to touch the short the pins, we should hear that sound. Sorry, you can't hear it now because it, the audio wasn't recording earlier. So apologies for that. But anyway, so now we'll see from the input side, we're going to quickly test so the middle one is the ground and now we don't see any shorting so that's good and now i'm going to test the output with the same voltage also going to put the switch back on again and switch it on so the output goes at the same voltage and then we'll see if we have uh, any problems or should power up now if our work is done correctly So ground in the middle. And then, yeah, you can see the digital going up. Yeah, I couldn't see it clearly, or it clearly earlier, but uh, yeah, that looks fine. So that's all working. Just gonna run more test. Yep. So we just need to order the parts now. 
and then uh, install it later. So um, I hope that makes sense. Uh, this is how we're fixing the board of the uh, boiler. That's uh, an Ariston boiler. Uh, Genius, actually, I think it's called Ar Ariston something. Um, yeah, so that's... Uh, Let's say I was just saved now about four hundred pounds uh, on on bought a new board and also uh, the cost of how you know the person coming to re install it or replace it. So that hopefully is a, is a good fix. Um, I, I I could put a different part, but I don't want to. I, I'd rather get the exact same part in to make sure that we don't have any issues uh, and the whole thing runs. Uh, as if it's brand new so yeah um we're just gonna order the parts and then um i'm pretty much gonna make another video uh or maybe add to this video later on to um to kind of uh... good evening Anna. it's sunday um and it's nice to see that there's a delivery today so we have two deliveries um Let's see. Hopefully, if um, if it is what we're looking for, so we got the caps, thousand fifty volts. That's the one. So good. This one. Now the second box. That's beautiful. I mean, don't you love Amazon sometimes? You order it on Saturday and Sunday it's delivered. Couldn't ask for more. But these are the caps. I ordered more caps as well, just in case. Um, and more caps also. This is the big one. Yes, let's see if we have it there. So what do we have here? Seven eight well C B yes. Let's compare the old one. L seven eight twelve C B beautiful. That is the one, see? And let's just put that up. the light back. And here they are, they look the same. And uh now you gotta replace them. But before do before I do that, let's just uh, test to see if um, we have the same reading that we had yesterday, that we had yesterday. Also, hopefully, the, um, the microphone is recording today. I don't have to re, uh, redo the recording again. So I'll just uh, putting these back. Um, let's begin. If you remember yesterday when we measured the input, it was one ohm. Good. That's one side. The other side. See? Nothing. It's not even triggering anything. Just measure the uh, resistance. 7 mega ohm. Brilliant. And 13 kilo. 
that looks like a healthy device good so looks like we're good to go so um, also before we carry on I need to get this one out of its package and uh, let me just think of the, of the, I don't know why they what they did but they, it looks like they um, they uh, Riveted that in. I don't like that. Probably need to use a, a compound as well. That's the heat sink, it's very needed. Okay, uh, let me just uh, cut that one off. I don't like rivets at all. There we go, it's out. Yep, thank you too. Okay, now what we need is two things a thermal compound to go on this one, and also uh, I'm going to put a, a proper screw and a, a nut to actually get this through because riveting. There will be air gaps and it's not going to work. So I'm just going to go over there, get some screw and compound, and be back in a minute. So just going to, oh, I'm not going to pause the video and it run. We can cut it later if we need. So. Finally found something. That was a pain in the neck to find. Moving houses is not easy. Anyway. Right, so we've got a few selections. Um, this one is pretty big. It's nice to have that one, but it's not going to fit. Don't go on about drilling this to make it more more uh, you know wider there's no point you probably damage the package um, so what we'll do that looks fine like this and then we go yeah. You can either use that cover it, or we could use that screwdriver, screw screw, or not, and then that, and then we can cut this bit off. Looks uh, looks too too big, so that can be cut off. That's fine. Uh, actually, I don't think we need uh, the other nuts in there. So I think that'll do. That'll be fine. Just um, push it up a bit. Actually, I'm just thinking about this. Um, the problem, if we go higher, which what it was before, um, the problem is there's a an air gap between uh, the chip and the the heatsink. So I'm going to go lower. I think it makes a lot of sense. Uh, but we can't just go lower like that one without testing, so we need to find out if the board can take it. So what we'll do 
just hook this in here. Do all that stuff before we start going on the heating, the, the thermal compound, I mean, sorry. There is no point putting the, um, the cream in before you have done um, your measurement work. So, let's see. Oh, there. Look at that. That's not good. We need to um, cut that one off. So, um, I'll be back in a minute. I'm just going to cut it off. It's too long. Or actually, I can do even a better one. So, we do it the other way around. So let's uh, go back and try to get this in. Yeah, so. Well, the main thing is can we. What's the lower we, or lowest we can go? is this. So, I think we're fine. We're very good. I think I like it. Everything looks good. Looks neat. And now what we'll do, just to be on the safe side, just want to lift it up a bit. Yep, I think we're good there. So now it's time for the compound. Just aligning the uh, entry. Absolutely fine. So what we're doing, we're aligning the holders, the fat bits of those pins, just before the brown end. And that uh, makes it uh, very fit. It looks all night. Nice and sweet. Here we go. Look at that. Fit nicely. Now, the uh, other bit, which is the uh, Mrs. Capacitor. We need a thousand fifty volts. Going so they've got the plus in here means the minus is on that side. What people might do sometimes is they just go all the way in, and I don't like that because what happens is if you have heat, you want it to just go just slightly above like that. That makes total sense because air can go through it or underneath it, sorry, and then cool it, cool it down. That's what I believe in. It's not, it's not a fact, but I think it works. So, now all we have is everything we need. I'm just going to switch on the yeah. Right, uh, I need some flux. People might wonder what flux do. 
it's uh, though I'm rising in my ears. Um, it actually deoxidizes the pins. So when you solder in, sometimes you might wonder why the heck is it not uh, sticking there? Is because it's all oxidated. Oxygen prevents um, metal parts from sticking to each other. So got a nice fair amount of quantity in there and it's going to start soldering so shorts oh, um, slight problem uh, well it's not really a problem it's shorting the um, pin off the ground to the uh, to the heat sink See much. Now let's just do a measure for any uh, shorts. That's good. And that's fine. So, before we carry on, we need to clean this up. Um, first, cut the pins. Need uh, isopropanol to clean things up. Otherwise, it's, uh, it'll be corroded. And when you clean out, you need a Acid brush to get things away. What you do is just get it away from the thingy. I need a tissue, but um, that's fine. Looks clean. Yep, that's perfect. Now, the moment. 
moment of truth. Let's take this on. That's probably my son messed up my uh, cutters. Okay, so off the. Uh, I'm now going to switch the board on. So. Is it going to work? So that's the circuit board we looked at earlier. This is the uh, where it goes to. And that's the boiler control panel. And that's the boiler in question. So this is a Genius HE Ariston boiler. So I'm just gonna put this together. And uh, yeah, the house is all kind of being redecorated and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, the problem is, I don't know how I'm going to hold this uh, camera uh, whilst I'm doing this, so it's going to be difficult. Um, what I think is best to do is to, um, maybe, see if that works. Yeah, I don't know. Let's see if I can get anything out of this, anyways. Right, so. Let's try again. Let's see how it goes. Perfect. Works good. Black cable is not connected. This is a really nice hot water. So yeah, I think we're all good. So uh, yeah, just leave it to the builders again. Carry on, and then uh, have a good day. Or good night.